You're listening to Puma Podcast. Hi, I'm Bella Perez Rubio, Puma Podcast, and you're listening to Teka Teka News. In this episode, I can say that they are still pretty much in the same situation that they were in, you know, months after the Marawi siege. A lot of people, you know, hundreds or thousands of people are still in temporary shelters. Actually, we still haven't gotten any update on what will happen to them since the land where the temporary shelters were built upon is owned by some private individuals and their contracts have already ended. Six years after the Marawi siege, a reparation package for its survivors is finally underway. On May 23, 2017, a deadly conflict erupted between the military and the Maute group. It lasted five months, saw over 1,000 killed, and decimated the only Islamic city in the country. The implementing rules and regulations for the Marawi Compensation Law were signed on May 23 of this year. We hear all about it from a member of the Marawi Reconstruction Conflict Watch, a multi-sector group composed of the city's residents. I am Dr. Rolanisa Dipatwad. I am currently the unit head for the licensing section of the Ministry of Health BARM. That's my work professionally, but I have been an active member of the Marawi Reconstruction Conflict Watch or the MRCW since 2018. And proud to say that we have really done our best in pushing for the Marawi Compensation Bill that is now the Marawi Compensation Act. It is a compensation for properties and structures uh, damaged during uh, Marawi siege. And then you also have the compensation for the loss of lives. So what the Marawi Compensation Board uh, put there is it has to be a minimum of 350,000 pesos no? in compensation for the loss of lives. The total budget for the compensation of Marawi survivors stands at 1 billion pesos. There is also a non-monetary compensation from the national government agencies such as the Department of Health, the Department of Education, but of course this will course through the same agencies. So this is very important for those who were displaced, the uh, students who were displaced during uh, Marawi siege, those who were injured and had illnesses during the Marawi siege, those who had trauma, etc. So those will be non-monetary compensation for them. But we still have yet to, you know, hear what it will be, you know, depending on the agency. So there's still going to be a lot of dialogue between probably the Marawi Compensation Board and these agencies that I have mentioned. So we are still waiting for the process of filing for claims. But we do believe that this should be planned carefully. Is this people who were living in the most affected area? Yeah, of course, yes. These people living in uh, temporary shelters are definitely the ones who were living in the most affected area. So just to give you, I can't give you an exact number, but like roughly, there's still a big chunk of them, like 60 to 70%, if not 80% of the population are still living in the temporary shelters. Take note that even if they're living there in temporary shelters, I have heard from people living there that they are paying for bills like their electricity and water that actually adds another layer in their struggle you know in their daily lives for the past six years initial government housing was rejected by residents and local authorities they said that construction was substandard and that the houses lacked basic utilities including access to running water it's kind of sad because parang naging paasa naging medyo paasa yung government natin in terms of delivering that promise that people will be able to return during the time of the task force Bangun Marawi 
the reason why people were infuriated was because they have been scheduling every single year when the people can come back and unfortunately it has not really happened yet some people have already returned but only in those areas na nasa outskirts ng Marawi City or in the most affected areas in 2017 the Duterte administration created Task Force Bangon Marawi an interagency group to facilitate the rehabilitation recovery and reconstruction efforts in Marawi Is there a projected timeline now as to when they'll be able to return? Before Task Force Bangon Marawi ended, they did say that it should be by the end of 2022, December. Oh, no, no, I think 2021. And then they said it's going to be in June of 2022. And then, wala na naman. So we're still here waiting if that's going to push through. Really, it's still a waiting game uh, as of this moment. And could you also tell us a bit about how your organization has been involved throughout this whole process? So, uh, Marawi Reconstruction Conflict Watch, or the MRCW for short, we have crafted and submitted the draft of the Marawi Compensation Bill to the Senate back in November 2019. And we went to the Senate and the Congress as well, no? And And then it was filed by uh, Senator Sabiri, I believe, by March of 2020. So after that, we continued lobbying and communicated uh, consistently to senators. The Marawi Compensation Law was passed in 2022. It established the Marawi Compensation Board, which is tasked with evaluating the claims of siege survivors. But of course, it's not done yet. The fight is just starting from it passing into a law. So that's one of the major work that the MRCW has done. And we also emphasize there, in terms of the Marawi Compensation Board, the MRCW emphasized or pushed of its composition the importance of having a multi-stakeholder members, meaning they come from different sectors. Including a physician, an educator. We have engineers, uh, lawyers, specifically from civic society organizations, an accountant, and it's very important. Also, if you've been here in Marawi, our traditional leaders should be members of that. So that's why now we are very happy that we already have the members of the board, but they should. Take advantage of their expertise in terms of implementing the IRR of this compensation law. Although this compensation package has been a long time coming, Marawi residents are already seeing likely hiccups in its implementation. More on that after a quick break. have a figure or an estimate of how many recipients the package will have? Oh, that's a very tricky question, but a very good question. After uh, the Marawi siege, there have been efforts by the government in giving or reaching out to people to give them some sort of ayuda. Unfortunately, it is still not jiving yet. That's why. Very good that you ask that because the work now of the Marawi Compensation Board, one of their work is to really get an accurate number of legitimate claimants for these packages that they will give out to affected people. That's why we believe that these members first have to have a deeper understanding of this compensation in the context of uh, Marawi City, in the context of Maranao people. And then the next one is they should understand the complexity of the Marawi compensation law as a concept and all the other challenges that come with it. Is there a timeline for the implementation of the package given all of this? Initially, they were saying that they should be able to uh, release some of the compensation within one year. 
But we still have to see that because they said they will prioritize those who are, you know, undoubtedly legitimate claims. They will prioritize those. And then for the remaining years, because, uh, of course, we do know that their work is only for five years. So what they said is the remainder of the years uh, that they have to work on it uh, will be on uh, things that will be very difficult for them to work on all by themselves, like the land dispute. So that was my next question is, for the financial reparation, how is that calculated? Yes, actually, they gave an amount of what they will give out to properties. For example, if it's a concrete building or structure, or if it's wood, or if it's mixed. So uh, for concrete, for example, they will give out like 18,000 thousand pesos per square meter although i am aware that the market value right now is at 21000 but they kind of fixed it at 18000 if it's concrete and then of course it's going to be lesser if it's wood i think they have not yet touched on private hospitals for example so if you're just going to pay for the structure itself then they're going to calculate that based on what they the value they've given so 18,000 per square meters uh, they will give that probably to the private hospital owners but then again you have to think about uh the equipments that they're that's there you know that's just the building so this is what makes it really complicated that's the reason why they have to really plan this out because in every sector there are internal intricacies there that they should consider. Does it also take into account, because I know in Marawi, the culture used to be your house, and then on top of your house sometimes is your business, right? So is that also taken into account in the compensation? Yeah, you know, that's another good question. <laughs> Supposed to be, there will be a compensation for whatever that you lost personally. Of course, among our residential houses, right? And then those houses that have businesses with it, they are still to consider how they're going to compensate for that. If they will categorize that in a residential or if they will categorize that into a commercial uh, category. So uh, we still have yet to hear what the board will do about that. In the meantime, the Marawi Reconstruction Conflict Watch is urging lawmakers to look into the funds for the city's rehabilitation. First, they have to really do their work on the oversight for the budget of the Marawi Compensation. And pangalawa is they have to have the oversight, the budget that was given for the past years, you know, under Task Force Bangun Marawi, because there's actually more than 10 billion that was given from the past administration, excluding the foreign donations. So there has to be some sort of accountability or kasi People of Marawi deserve better, especially that they have been in this situation for more than half a decade already. So I think it's about time that they have their, what, their day in the sun. They should be, be able to go back to their lives or at least have their dignity back when they were displaced. And that was today's episode of Teca, Teca News. Again, I'm Bella Perez Rubio. This episode was edited by Pedoy Blanco. Follow Teca, Teca News on your favorite podcast app or listen to us for free on YouTube. Thanks for listening. <laughs>